Hi guys. So yesterday I made a video about Glennon Doyle, um, her book Untamed, and um, it, I shared a chapter of the book called The Knowing. And if you haven't watched that video, I would suggest that you go back and um, watch that video before you watch this one because it explains a lot of her journey, um, her, her, her life experience and how it pertains to why she wrote the material that she did. So if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch that one. Um, and I just made it yesterday, so it's, it's, it's new. Um, but anyway, I wanted to share a different chapter that talks about a, a, a different, so yesterday was about the knowing and about knowing um, what you want are coming into that knowing and listening to that what's inside here versus what everybody else is telling you and all that stuff. So go back and watch that video. It's real. It's really insightful. She is a wonderful writer. Um, and I would, I would highly suggest her book. Um, but today I wanted to talk about, uh, it's called feel. So it's, it's a chapter. It's called feel. And, um, it's all about, um, it talks about, how we have to feel things. I mean, we're, we're humans. We are meant to feel our feelings. And the way she writes this chapter just gives me goosebumps because she said it, well, I'll just read it and then I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on it. Um, we're meant to feel, we're human. We're meant to feel things. We're not meant to stifle our feelings and shove things under the, you know, rug and all that stuff like we're meant to experience life that's why we came here right so anyway I'm just gonna read it and then um I'll elaborate a little bit <clears throat> so she's talking about her struggle so she got um she got pregnant very young um and she had been abusing drugs and alcohol and um so then she, when she got pregnant obviously she had to become sober and she talks about how um so this is how she steps into that feeling place and she's before I start reading um she's an, obviously I think I'm pretty sure she's an empath I'm an empath I feel very deeply I feel everything very strongly like there's there's different levels of empath empathy within people and I am on the extreme <laughs> Like, and I feel like she is on the extreme level too. Like when it doesn't matter, I, I can read, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to go into that right now, but anyway, there's, there's a, there's different levels to where, um, to where people feel into other people's energy fields. And I feel it very, I feel people's energy fields very, very strongly. And I feel like she is one of those people. So anyway. I hope that makes sense. Feel. Key one. Feel it all. On my sixth day of sobriety, I went to my fifth recovery meeting. I sat in a cold plastic seat, trembling, trying to keep the coffee from spilling out of my paper cup and my feelings from spilling out of my skin. For 16 years, I had made damn sure that nothing touched me. And suddenly... Everything in the world was touching me. I was an exposed nerve. Everything hurt. I was embarrassed to tell anyone how much I hurt, but I decided to try to explain it to the people in that circle. They were the first people I trusted with all of me because they were the first people I ever heard tell the whole truth. They had shown me their insides, show, so I showed them mine. I said something like, I'm Glennon. I've been sober for six days. I feel awful. I think this awfulness is why I started drinking in the first place. I'm starting to worry that what was wrong with me wasn't the booze. It was underneath it. It wasn't me. It doesn't seem like being alive is as hard for other people as it is for me. It just feels like there's some kind of secret to life I don't know, like I'm doing it wrong. After the meeting ended, a woman walked over and sat down next to me. She said, 
Thanks for sharing. I relate. I just wanted to tell you something that somebody told me in the beginning. It's okay to feel all of the stuff you're feeling. You're becoming human again. You're not doing life wrong. You're doing it right. If there's any secret you're missing, it's that doing it right is really hard. <laughs> feeling all your feelings is hard, but that's what they're there for. Feelings are for feeling, all of them, even the hard ones. The secret is that you're doing it right and that doing it right hurts sometimes. And this is the part that really gets me. I did not know before that woman told me that all feelings were for feeling. <laughs> I did not know that I was supposed to feel everything. I thought I was supposed to feel happy. I thought that happy was for feeling and that pain was for fixing and numbing and deflecting and hiding and ignoring. I thought that when life got hard, it was because I had gone wrong somewhere, making yourself wrong because you feel pain. I thought that pain was weakness and that I was supposed to suck it up. But the things that but the thing was that the more I sucked it up, the more food and booze I had to suck down. That day I began returning to myself, fearful and trembling, pregnant and six days sober, in a church basement with shitty fluorescent lights and terrible coffee, when a kind woman revealed to me that being fully human is not about feeling happy, it's about feeling everything. From that day forward, I began to practice feeling it all. I began to insist upon my right and responsibility to feel it all, even when taking the time and energy for feeling made me a little less efficient and a little less convenient and a little less pleasant. In the past 18 years, I have learned two things about pain. First, I can feel everything and survive. What I thought would kill me didn't. Every time I said to myself, I can't take this anymore, I was wrong. The truth was that I could and did take it all. I kept surviving. Surviving again and again made me less afraid of myself and of other people and of life. I learned that I'd never be free from pain, but I could be free from the fear of pain. And that was enough. I find that's, that's powerful. I could be free from the fear of pain. I finally stopped avoiding fires long enough to let myself burn. And what I learned was that I am like that burning bush. The fire of pain won't consume me. I can burn and burn and still live. I can live on fire. I am fireproof. I can use pain to become. I am here to keep becoming truer, more beautiful versions of myself again and again forever. <laughs> to be alive is to be a person a perpetual in a perpetual state of revolution. Whether I like it or not, pain is the fuel of revolution. Everything I need to become the woman I'm meant to be next is inside my feeling feelings of now. Life is alchemy, and emotions are the fire that turns me to gold. I will continue to become only if I resist extinguishing myself a million times a day. If I can sit in the fire of my own feelings, I will keep becoming. Consumer culture promises us that we can buy our way out of pain, that the reason we're sad and angry is not that being human hurts. It's because we don't have those countertops, her thighs, these jeans. This is a clever way to run an economy, but it is no way to run a life. Consuming keeps us distracted, busy, and numb. Numbness keeps us from becoming, from ourselves. This is why every great spiritual teacher tells us the same story about humanity and pain. Don't avoid it. You need it to evolve, to become, 
and you are here to become like Buddha who had to leave his life of comfort to experience all kinds of human suffering before finding enlightenment enlightenment like Moses who wandered 40 years in the desert before seeing the promised land like Wesley from the princess bride who said life is pain highness anyone who says differently is selling something like Jesus, who walks straight towards his own crucifixion. First the pain, then the waiting, then the rising. All of our suffering comes when we try to get to our resurrection without allowing ourselves to be crucified first. There is no glory except straight through your story. Pain is not tragic, pain is magic. Suffering is tragic. Suffering is what happens when we avoid pain and consequently miss our becoming. That is what I can and must avoid. Missing my own evolution because I am too afraid to, sur to, sur to surrender to the process. Having such little faith in myself that I numb or hide or consume my way out of my fiery feelings again and again. So my goal is to stop abandoning myself and stay. To trust that I'm strong enough to handle the pain that is necessary to the process of becoming. Because what scares me a hell of a lot more than pain is living my entire life and missing my becoming. What scares me more than feeling is missing it all. These days when pain comes, there are two of me. There is the me that is miserable and afraid and there is the me that is curious and excited. That second me is not a masochist. She's wise. She remembers. She remembers that even though I can't know what will come next in my life, I always know what comes next in the process. I know that when the pain and the waiting are here, the rising is on its way. I hope the pain will pass soon, but I'll wait it out because I've tested pain enough to trust it. And because who I will become tomorrow is so unforeseenable and specific that I'll need every bit of today's lesson to become her. I keep a note stuck to my bathroom mirror. Feel it all. It reminds me that although I, be I began to come back to life 18 years ago, I resurrect myself every day and every moment that I allow myself to feel and become. It's my daily reminder to let myself burn to ashes and rise anew. It's such a beautiful chapter because, I mean, I think we're, we're um, raised in a society that teaches you that you need to be, um, you need to stuff down your emotions and you, you need to be ashamed of being afraid or um, living. And when you feel fear, you just should pretend like it's not there. And that is really... Um, that's such a shame because we all feel it um, on varying degrees throughout our life experiences. And we all go through pain. We all go through some sort of suffering. We all go through fear, you know. Um, and I wish that they would teach classes in schools about learning how to um, embrace your fears and embrace your feelings. 